coming up on this episode of Free Lunch. <laughs> Yo, Asia said, I've been waiting to be socially distanced from a bunch of y'all. But going into the event, we had already done so much relationship building together along the way. I see the impact of what you and I are doing, and of course the rest of Overflow. Um, Shout out to Overflow. What's going on, guys? It's another episode of Free Lunch with The Real Free, your boy Freestyle Gospel, a.k.a. The Real Free, a.k.a. Free. For today's episode, we got a special guest, a friend of mine, uh, through unlikely scenario or unlikely meeting, but a friend nonetheless. Also, what are we going to be chopping up is just a few check-ins with one another, as well as just seeing how everybody's doing with this COVID-19 situation going on. We're going to be talking about faith this episode. We got coming up topics of battle rap, friendships, relationships, how do they get fostered in battle rap, lives, how our lives changed in battle rap. And lastly, if we got time for, we're going to chop it up a little bit about just that empty room sermon. You ever heard of one of those? An empty room sermon. It's like this echo, but what exactly does it mean? So without any further ado, let's get into it. Free lunch with your boy, The Real Free. My man, Angel, you on the line? What's good, baby? My brother, what is going on? It is a pleasure and honor to be here. I am excited. Yo, but I'm so excited as well, man. But just a quick check-in, bro. Like, uh, it's been a minute since we've uh, had a chance to actually see each other. Um, Way before even this current situation we're all faced with even got popped off. But how are, you know, how, how are you doing? How's the family doing? Is everybody safe? Everybody's doing good? You know, um... All thanks to God, you know, my, my family is doing good. Um, unfortunately, I did lose someone, you know what I'm saying, uh, in the wow. family. You know what I'm saying? Uh, one of my uncles had passed away from, from COVID, so that was a little bit difficult, you know, um, because, I don't know, I, I, I suppose the fact that, like, you see everything going on in the news, but it finally hits home in a way. Yeah. You know, but thankfully I'm at peace with the fact that he gave himself to the Lord and... I know at the end of the day, you know, God's plans are good. So I'm not going Amen. to necessarily question the whys and all that. Just be at peace with what's happened. Yeah, yeah. That's a it's a real it's a real tough time right now as the time has gone by. Like at, at the at the onset, you know, it was further and further away from all of us as a country, as you know, US. And it kinda was just something that we heard about happening in China or other countries and then it really hit home. Um, as far as, you know, our homeland, you know, our country, but then it started to get closer and closer to us. Like it used to be, you know, just two, three, four weeks ago, you know, you kind of just knew someone who knew somebody who had the, you know, who had the coronavirus. Now it's like, I know someone directly that has coronavirus, you know, it's like getting, it seems to really be getting closer to a lot of our families. Yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, I mean, I remember back in January, February, you know, just looking at the news and you would read, you know, first confirmed case of the coronavirus in, yeah. you know, Queens, New York. And, you know, me thinking like, OK, that's going to stay isolated to that area. And just as, as the days go by, you know, you start to see people just more people getting infected with it uh, to the point where you start seeing your friends going on social media, asking for prayer yeah because of the fact that now they have it so it just seems like every every week is a new is a new yeah. challenge uh, to go through i think that's why it's so key that as a uh, as believers that we be the the light and hope to those that don't have that yeah man it's i mean and, and you you hit you hit a, another interesting nail on the head is um i noticed kind of the the facebook phenomenon happening too like you started to see posts from friends of yours or people connected to you on Facebook and people are like asking for prayer for this person. You're like, oh my God, like this, a lot more people that I know or I'm connected to are being faced with this. So it's definitely a time, man, to, you know, be, uh, be cautious, you know, be more health conscious, um, but also a time and an opportunity for, I think, a lot of us to be ignited in our faith and to hold on tighter to God. Um, and, you know, as, as it relates to faith, you know, faith is 
one of our topics we're going to get into first, um, kind of from a different angle. But uh, before we get into that, man, just, um, you know, just share with, you know, I, I already let them know that Angel's friend of mine uh, and that we met through, you know, not your typical uh, avenue, but I'll let, I'll let you kind of introduce yourself and what it is that you do, what makes you dope. I'll let you do sh introduce yourself, man. Tell them who you are, Angel, what you do, man. <laughs> oh, wow. Um, yeah, so my name is Angel. There's a couple of things that I do, you know, for the, the kingdom. You know, one is I am a Christian hip-hop artist, so that's, like, my main thing. I also do Christian battle rap with the Overflow Rap League. And then third, I am also a podcaster. I have a podcast that I do monthly uh, named The Message. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, so um, I'm actually, you know, working on a new episode, interestingly enough, on the coronavirus. I feel like, you know, God had instilled that to me to kind of give my a Christian's perspective on what's going on and how I feel God wants us to respond to it. You know? Yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah, those are, the, those are the three things that I do. You know, I'm just trying to make God as famous as I can. <laughs> no doubt. You know what I mean? Spread it to as, as many people as I can through what he's given me, so. Amen, amen. And just, you know what I mean, just to kind of drop that uh, little backstory or history in, your, in you guys' ear, how I met Angel uh, was at a battle rap event. Um, uh, he was not battling myself. I was at the battle rap event battling another Christian hip-hop artist. Shout out to Overflow Rap League. Um, but I met him there, and then we had our opportunity to uh, sharpen each other's swords and trade trade bars at our own um, event where we faced off. But uh, from that moment, Angel has been a dear friend of mine, a close brother in Christ, and I appreciate him um, for all just that he's been and meant to me in my life, the way he stayed connected to me outside of an event. And I think um, that speaks volumes. But we'll get into that a little later, just that connectedness and just things, relationships that foster from battle rap. We'll chop into that a little later. Uh, but as it relates to faith, um, we mentioned faith as being an opportunity for people to have faith right now in this time that we're faced with as far as COVID-19. But what I wanted to talk about, uh, the aspect of faith, is as it pertains to our faith working for us, our faith, having faith in God and having a faith that brings about change, brings about something that we desire or something that we want. And I think it's important to, to really grasp this um, grasp that faith without works is dead. And I'll take it one step further. And I believe that actually, if you're calling yourself exercising faith or having faith, you should have something tangible or physical that you're doing that lines up with your faith. So what do I mean by that? I'll, I'll, I'll be even more clear and try to clarify even more. If I believe or I have faith, I say that I have faith in for something to occur in my life. So let's say a new job. I have faith that God is going to bless me with a better job. I believe that with every single thing you claim to have faith for, there should be an action that you do to fortify that faith, to actually bring that faith to completion. So what's an example of that, just to keep it black and white? If I'm, a, if I'm hoping for a better job, one just common sense action is to put in applications or apply for a better job. Amen? I mean... I think that makes sense. It's pretty Absolutely. straightforward. Okay. So there are more, much, many more complex things that I believe people have faith for and they can't seem to find where can I put action to that? I mean, Angel, correct me if I'm wrong. If, if, if you say, I mean, is there anything that you th think that you could have faith for and it really truly not be an action that you could, even if it's a small action, an action that you could put along with that faith? 
can't think of anything. I feel like there has to be some due diligence done on our end. You know, um, we can't just sit on the sidelines. You know, like we have to walk in that faith. There has to be some type of action done. I mean, it's like I, I think it's I think a lot of times we find truths that are hidden in some of the common everyday like phrases we say. So when you say something like, I want to exercise my faith. Just in that statement, you hear action in that statement. You can't exercise faith without movement, without you doing something. If there's something you are believing God for and you're not doing any action that relates to that thing, in my opinion, that's not exercising faith. That's just not faith. You can't call that faith. You ever heard this angel where somebody says something like, uh, yeah, but I'm, I'm, I'm trusting God for this, but I, I need to wait on the Lord. So, some, <laughs> so sometimes that phrase, like, you know, we take that, I need to wait on the Lord. And we take it like literal to, to mean I'm just supposed to trust God for this type of thing. And it means me doing nothing at all in that vein. Yeah. And um, it's it's uncomfortable to hear it, you know, because because, you know, it comes from a good place. Right. Right. But it's you know, there's a there's a disagreement between that, you know, between me and that and that person when that's said. (laughs) (laughs) There's a disagreement. (laughs) <laughs> that's that's a, I like I like the way you put that. <laughs> the disagreement. I mean, it's light at best. It's, you know what I mean, I'm not you know horribly against people that feel that way. You know, like I said, I know it comes from a good place. I understand that. You know, people truly believe that they are. If anything, you know, I'm I'm not offended by it or or anything like that. If anything, I feel sorry for those who take that stance to just believe that, you know what? God is going to do this for me. I just need to just wait on the Lord. And I, and the only reason why I feel, I, I say I feel sorry is because I believe that you're missing out on actually what God wants to bring to you. The thing that you're actually hope, actually hoping for. I believe that God is always going to require something that you need to do, whether you're writing it down and making it plain. The thing that you're believing God for, literally, whether you're just writing that thing down, putting it out there, speaking life with your tongue and saying, I believe that God, put it on your prayer wall. That's an action. That's an actionable task that you can do to go along with something that you say you have faith for. There has to be some type of action, you know? There's Um, something, something. Like like Matthew 6.33. You know, seek the kingdom of God above all else. That's and live righteously. Those are actions, you know, and he will give you everything you need. Those are those are actions. Hold on. Repeat that. Repeat that verse again. (laughs) Repeat that one again, man. Seek the kingdom of God above all else. So see and live righteously and he will give you everything you need. So we got seek and then I heard live. Those those sound like two actions. Seek and live, people. Seek and live. It's important in this time that obviously I think is applicable for everybody that exercise to exercise faith in God more, more than ever. And there's many things as far as our health that we might feel like I'm totally vulnerable. There's nothing that I can do. Um, but then that is inaccurate, right? There's things that we are taking action in, even in this, this scenario with this health crisis. You can just say, oh, I'm going to, just have faith that God is going to keep me healthy and I'm not going to catch the, you know, COVID-19. But okay, I have that same faith as well, but I take actionable steps where I'm staying indoors, I'm limiting limiting my time around other people, um, you know, social distancing, which is why I'm still trying to run my podcast and have guests to talk to, uh, you know, through uh, you know, uh, through the phone lines. Um but there's an action. Washing my hands. There's actions that make the that that faith complete. Faith without works. Faith with no action is dead. Have you been staying inside, Angel? Have you been social distancing? <laughs> Absolutely. And look, it's not. I've been prepared for this for a long time. I'm a homebody as it is. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Angel said, "I've been waiting to be socially distanced from a bunch of y'all." 
Yeah, but I definitely, I definitely agree because, uh, and I'm going to talk about this also a little bit in the podcast because God also gave us wisdom. We we can't we can't be careless and just walk around with no gloves and being in proximity of people who are coughing and sneezing and just say, I'm I'm immune to everything, right? Because yeah, that that's not how it works. That's not how it works. We have to exercise wisdom, yeah. and on top of that, it's not just for ourselves, but other people we're doing this for. Yeah, yeah. You know, so we we have to be mindful of that, and again, do our due diligence in being safe. Yeah, and then of course, trusting in God in that as well. But you're you're absolutely right. I I don't necessarily agree with people who aren't following the social distancing. I think there are. I, I've seen even some churches where they've gotten in trouble for yeah. at holding services as normal and the bible speak very clearly on we're not out here breaking laws out here yeah you know, yeah, if, yeah. If, the, if the government is telling us it's it's for our protection i don't see anything wrong with social distancing if this prevents the virus being spread so yeah no nah, man that's that's true and i and I, but you know to that to the opposite end i've actually seen on social media some excellent examples of churches um thinking outside the box and being able to have church services, um, you know, like a, like drive through services. I've, I've seen, you know, that idea. Um, I think we've seen a lot more churches, um, step up their digital game, um, step up their online presence and been able to, you know, have uh, services you know, videotaped. Um, and, and the message of God is able to get out. The message of the gospel is able to reach many more people. So in actually following the social distancing laws or, you know, things that are in place, they've actually worked in a way to further the gospel. I, I believe, you know, that's a that's a perspective I think is is healthy and, and worth looking at. Look at that. Something like. Just, you know, it actually reminds me of the Apostle Paul, where he said those two years he spent under house arrest, he said he's actually joyful because it has, it, it, it's acted, God has used it to further the gospel. It used, somehow that time in confinement was used for the glory of God. It was used to further the gospel. So now you have many churches that they can't have face-to-face -face services or in person. So it's caused them to have to find a way to get their service or online and broadcast the message of, of, of Christ and the gospel online. And look, now their messages, their services are reaching not just their usual following of people, congregation, but many others that it would have never have ever gotten to had they not been forced to kind of have to do that because of this crisis that's currently going on. I'm not I'm not going to jump too much into 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 Angel's future podcast topic. If you guys if you guys want to hear more about that, make sure you tune into my man podcast, The Message. Amen. Like I said, I, my boy Angel, we met through some unlikely or unusual terms in battle rap, but um I've been and I'm sure Angel, he's got his own examples and stories, but I've been blessed and Angel is I think by far my biggest example of the way that battle rap can be used to one, you know, just not only further the gospel, but in a very, you know, just tangible, um, uh, you know, to a, a, to a social degree, just create new relationships and friendships and bonds and change lives in general. In my, in my battle with Angel, the, the battle rap event where we were to face off, leading up to it, we decided that we were going to be one another's accountability partner. And basically really what that meant, I know for many people, it can mean a lot of different things. Um, so if you don't hear what it meant for us, if you don't hear what comes to your mind when you hear accountability partner, no offense, none taken. This is just what it meant for us. It really just meant that we stayed connected. Um, and I know that sounds general and kind of broad, but I think it really meant just that. And Angel could, could correct me if I'm wrong. It really just meant we stayed in touch. It's not like we had like these accountability, uh, scheduled Bible studies together. Like, you know, it wasn't this, it wasn't this like structured, uh, you know, cookie cutter scheduled thing. 
it was very organic and it really just started off with just me reaching out to him by text because again i i didn't even know this guy you know and now i'm getting ready to have a battle rap event against him and I'm supposed to just expect him to open up to me and we're going to be accountability partners and kumbaya? Nah, <laughs> it doesn't work like that. Um, so I kind of really had to just put myself out there and just texting the brother and just being, you know, just like, you know, what's up, man? Checking on you, praying for you, man. Text messaging grew to phone calls, you know what I mean? And us being able to chop it up on the phone. And before it was all said and done, you know, we kind of walked into our event and as two Christian rappers entering a, a battle rap event going against one another that's a controversial idea in and of itself um but going into the event we had already done so much relationship building together along the way that it made not only the event great or awesome but afterwards this is how long ago was that now was that like a year or two years ago um, a year and a half ago oh my gosh i think it's gonna be I'm trying to think. It was 2018, if I'm not mistaken. So yeah, so we go, we going on two years. So it's going on two years ago that event was, and I have not only maintained the relationship with my brother Angel, but it's grown. The things that we've been able to share with each other has been able to be, you know, more, um, you know, involved or you know, us sharing. You know, I'm married with kids. Angel, you know, he has you know, his family and, you know, relationship things that he goes through. And we've been able to just share more of those intimate details about our lives with, he, with one another. And so it's been a blessing, man, him just encouraging me. So, you know, and that's just, like I said, he's just my one example. Angel, talk to him, man. Am I lying? Like, how? how? Not at all. Make sure you follow us everywhere at Free Lunch. Make sure you follow on iTunes, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, streaming on Spotify. And if you are not able to see this video because you are listening on a streaming site, more reason to go and follow on social media, especially Facebook. You can see the video post at Free Lunch as well as follow, subscribe to the YouTube channel, youtube.com slash The Real Free. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it, it has been very surreal. The more time that passes by, the more... I see the impact of what you and I are doing, and of course the rest of Overflow. Um, Shout out I to have Overflow. Seen people be encouraged to actually do battle rap themselves as Christians, which has been amazing. Uh, I have seen. I think the biggest thing for me has been where there have been non-believers who have contacted me, letting me know that they've actually had to refer back to Scripture to understand some of the references that I made in my rounds in previous battles and whatnot. I think uh, one example was I had said, I had mentioned how I took an absence from battle rap and, you know, I'm, I'm up here feeling like Peter the way I took a year off and the crowd went nuts and whatnot and they wanted to understand what exactly did that mean. So they were led to wow. go back to scripture, understand it, and it's something that, it's amazing because when I came up with these rounds and whatnot, you know, I, yes, I'm looking at impact, but there's certain things you just don't think about at the moment. I'm not thinking about yeah, yeah. somebody who's going to listen to it and want to understand <laughs> the references yeah. and go back into scripture. And a seed is being sown there because I'm leading them to God. And after, after, at the end of the day, that's what it's all about. Yeah, Bringing man. people back home. And so being able to plant those seeds into people has been absolutely amazing. Um now, do you feel like do you feel like it's one of those things where I'll ask you this first is you're I know you're a Christian rapper. You do um, Christian battle rap as it pertains to rapping as an art form. Have you always been a Christian rapper? No. OK. Um, as a battle rapper. Have you always been a Christian battle rapper? No. No. Okay. So when you first approached battle rap, because I know you've been, you know, battle rapping for a number of years, um, as a for the time that you've been a Christian battle rapper, at the beginning of that time, was the way that you approached it as a Christian battle rapper the same way that you approach it now? Like, has it always been from like as a Christian? Like, I know. I'm going to, you know, change lives or, or or the perspective I want to change lives. Like, has that always been 
as a Christian battle rapper, your mindset going into it, or that's something that has evolved as a Christian battle rapper? Uh, that's a great question. I believe from the beginning, in terms of how I went about things, it certainly evolved. Um, because, you know, in the beginning, when I first started battling, it was more just pushing the envelope of what can be said. And as time went on okay. and I rededicated myself back to Christ, it gave everything meaning. Okay. You know? Um, got you, got you. And so when I think my first battle as in, like, where I really was like, I'm a Christian battle rapper, was back in... I want to say 2014, and you know, I, I wanted I wanted to come into battle like this is this is who I am. You know, I feel like I felt like in previous battles I was I wasn't necessarily myself, and that sh that came across that way. So I wanted to show people who I was and take risks in the battle. So I, you know, um, spoke about my opponent, and then I also in the round talked about my shortcomings and how i'm not one to judge i'm somebody who struggles with certain things as well yeah and i did that fully expecting that i could be booed i could not get good reception from the crowd but doing it with the intent that there there are there are people there this is this is a crowd and i want something to be resonating with them and so after the battle actually my opponent's entourage like we're all shaking my hands they, they wow. some of them told me they felt convicted you know, wow. they, they said, you know, I'm, I'm still in the streets, but I believe in God, wow. you know, like where they felt, they felt led to, to come to me, you know, and, it's, yeah, and I'm yeah. not deserving of that yeah, at yeah. all, but for them to feel convicted and, and just want to express like, Hey, listen, what you said touched me. Um, uh, that's fire. So, yeah. So from the beginning, but it has evolved in how I went about things. The mindset it sounds like you have right now, it's like for change lives. And I think, um, or the mindset is, I believe, the, is that you know the 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 very high probability or opportunity that exists to be able to change lives in your battle rap now. Um, would you say it's something that, let's say, if this is, let's say, if you know somebody who um, has just, you know, they've been maybe a battle rapper for a really long time you know, as far as in the secular, you know, world or secular circles. And um, and now they just, you know, give their lives to Christ or they, you know, now they want to be a Christian battle rapper. Um, would you say that's something that they, you know, just as far as just giving advice, right? There's not, not to say that there is a right or wrong or biblical wrong way or about doing this, but from the, just a, giving advice, would you say someone who's new, not to battle rap, but new as a Christian battle rapper, because they just now, you know, they just gave their life to Christ and they're just starting to read God's word. Um, would you say that that's something that they should jump right into, meaning battle rap as now a Christian battle rapper right away? Or do you think it's wise to maybe first really get grounded in your scripture and grounded in your walk with God and then make that transition over to a Christian battle rapper? What would you say? I would definitely suggest, I, I don't think necessarily there's a right or wrong answer to this, but I would highly no. suggest that, yes, that they do not jump into the battle rap arena, you know, when they're new to the faith. Um, people, you know, I understand that when people have an encounter with God, they're, they're on fire and whatnot, and that's great, but they really need to be dedicating that time as much as they can to getting to know who god is yeah. um, battle rap is something that not even every christian is called to do it is not something that is easy to do yeah that's why accountability is so important in preparation for these because you know we're, we're infiltrating a sport that is typically seen as you know braggadocious full yep. of pride tearing each other down yeah and in christian battle rap especially in the realm of christians battling each other is such a relatively new concept that and you know we're still figuring it out and we <laughs> yeah. have christians here who have been christians you know all their lives and it's still a struggle i i, yeah. I have i you know i was raised in the church i straight away you know throwing my teens and whatnot um but even as i rededicated my myself there are still times when i have to filter things through the holy spirit yeah, you know yeah. god is this should I, you know, would I say this 
in, in real life to this person? You know, is this something that's edifying? What what is, what point am I trying to make here? Am yeah. I trying to to build them up or destroy them? And so that's yeah. something that is is a struggle because the enemy understands that you know if you slip up. Yeah. There's, there's a lot of scrutiny that you'll be under, especially yeah. as a Christian. There are Christian artists, big Christian artists, who have admitted that they know they're not for that because they 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 know yes. themselves well enough that yes. it'll the the writing or the content yep. will go a route that may not be considered godly. Yep, I've heard shockingly, I've heard some of those artists, um, big name artists, who've come out and just been humble and straightforward and said that that like yo. I'm a, you know, I'm a Christian rapper, but I know um, Christian battle rap is not for me because I just know that I could I could come at somebody's head in a whole nother way that I don't want to kind of I don't want to uh, bring bring those flashbacks back of me being in the streets. <laughs> um, but, you know, that's just that's being humble. That's being transparent. And I appreciate um, those rappers who have said that, um, you know, that's much respect, man. It takes knowing yourself. And it takes being, like I said, being humble and just honest, man, with yourself, man. You got to be honest with yourself more than anything. But you said something that was obviously very wise, right? And like we said, there's no right or wrong way. There's that time where spending time getting to know God for yourself and getting grounded is very important. Um, and so important that there's many times where God is pouring out... Uh, knowledge and you know teaching or wisdoms understanding to you and it may be very well edifying for somebody else as well for others but there's that time where you have to spend kind of like um you know think of it as a a a, a table setting for one you know is there's that time where you have to be making sure yourself uh you are being fed and being fed appropriately and knowing and learning and, and spending time with God daily, getting all that you can uh, before you seek to, uh, quote unquote, educate others. So, you know, that brings us to our, our, our last topic I wanted to talk about, um, where it's like this idea of a, a empty room sermon. And God kind of gave me this uh, idea, phrased this, that way, an empty room sermon because of the the side effects of that and when i say the side effects of that i'm talking about the the literal side effects what bounces off the walls of an empty room you hear the echo right right you hear the echo you hear you hear more than any other place or room that might be filled with furniture or filled with people you hear yourself you hear yourself louder so it's this idea that I believe in, in when you are rooted in that foundation and trying to spend that intimacy or time alone with God and God is giving you a word. Hey, get somewhere and preach that word to yourself, essentially. Get into that empty room, get into that empty place, right? Because you have even outside of just, uh, you know, normal every, you know, day to day settings, you have settings in uh, the creative arenas like battle rap where people are anxious angel correct me if i'm wrong to get to a full sold out stadium or get to a platform or stage where it's packed out for a battle rap and they haven't spent the time first being in that empty room with their own bars with your own content the things that you're trying to use to convict the opponent or combat quote unquote, the enemy, there are things or things that you're trying to use to educate, you know, in the, in the, in the scenarios where it's two Christian battle rappers at each other, cases where you're trying to edify or encourage even, have you first spent that time alone encouraging and being edified yourself, bro? Absolutely. It's so, and I, and I love when, you know, you, you mentioned empty room, right? Because Man, I, I, God is someone who, you know, he can he can he can certainly yell, but he wants our full undivided attention. You know, he wants us to give 
full undivided attention. And, and I like I like how you said that. I like I like how you worded that. He he could yell, but he he doesn't like to. But but he's very well capable of yelling. <laughs> I mean, it's, you know, it's in scripture, you know, he's definitely done it. But, uh, you know, when you, when it comes to preparation for, for, for battles, right, there's, there's certain things in the spiritual that we don't see. We, we're doing something powerful in the kingdom. And obviously we're going to be coming under spiritual attack from the enemy because the enemy understands the amount of damage that we can do to his plans. Yep. You know, undoing that and opening people's eyes and spreading hope and, and, and love, um, and it's so important to have that one-on-one communion with God, and having God just speak to you. You know, do, like there's times I will write something down, and as I'm as I'm rehearsing it, just myself, God will put into me, say something else, you know, and I yeah. and, I'll, and I'll listen to that. Faith and comes with obedience. Yeah. So, you know, in, in doing so, God provides me with something else to say. In in, in in its place and whatnot. Um, yeah, it is super important to just be able to have that one-on-one communication with God, not have any distractions when possible. Uh, I've had God speak to me in my, in my room, the car. Oh my gosh. Yeah. <laughs> the car is underrated when it comes to, um, yeah, <laughs> the car, the car what? ministry is real, bro. Like that's <laughs> like I, I've had like on my, I used to have on my Facebook status um, for a while, man. That uh, my car or not my Facebook status. I'm sorry. Um, online, like where I have my my bio, it used to read at the bottom line somewhere uh, for like at least a year. I had it up there where it said. My favorite place to pray is inside my car because I get to scream as loud as I want. And that's just like, that's just real, man. People underestimate that alone time, you know? It's like, I mean, but again, you know, that's that's the other thing that, that could be uh, the flip side of that coin is sometimes people can be fearful of that alone time because while alone, there's no one else to look at or point the finger at while alone there's only yourself to look at there's only yourself to critique there's only yourself to hear from god and be corrected you know what i mean whereas Absolutely. whereas those of us who get um kind of uh you know whether it's worried or you know who feel embarrassed by the correction of god or who always want to come off as posh or or more righteous than thee you know they want to get into a room that's packed out because there's plenty of people to point a finger at. There's there's plenty of people to look at other than themselves, um, because when you look, you know, when they look at themselves in that mirror or when that when they're alone, they don't see something that they like, you know, or they don't see something that God has said, you know, has said He's pleased with, you know. They they hear the correction of God, and so kind of kind of shying away from that empty room has been a way for some people to kind of run from God. Uh, because I know in that empty room, the only other voice that I'm going to hear besides mine is the voice of God, man. And that could be, that could be pretty, pretty, uh, frightening, man, for some people. Yeah, I agree a hundred percent. People can be very uncomfortable with silence, you know, because silence, God, a lot of times, especially when you're alone, uh, in the car driving or whatever, God will bring certain things from your heart to light that you may not have been thinking about or mm-hmm. have been trying to hide you know um certain people like for example let's say someone is having unforgiveness in their heart you know and they feel justified in feeling that way because such and such person did such and yeah. such thing and they feel justified and they don't really want to hear from god that they need to forgive that person i think sometimes another benefit of the empty room sermon or really just the time being alone with the word of god as you're hearing it or you feel is you know, edible or fruitful for also other people, that time alone also is humbling because I think it it prepares you for when, you know, God wants to take you to a a, a sold out stadium or the bigger, higher place. There there doesn't have to be this worry about you being kind of uh big headed or being blinded by the limelight. Uh and, and the notoriety because of the time that you spent 
in the secret place, in the small place, in the place where you were the only one there. Um, so, you know, there, there's, there's really, really just so much, um, edifying, so much edifying things and, uh, to be had in that empty room in that time alone. And for some of us, bro, it's not even a physical thing. It's, it's metaphorically speaking, you know, the empty room, uh, the empty room paradigm can really be also paralleled with people who feel like, I don't have enough followers on social media or how come when I post something about, you know, God or I post my, you know, church event or women's workshop, whatever it is, how come I don't get enough likes or people don't share my posts? That could be uh, that could be you being faced with the empty room phenomenon, quote unquote. And now how are you going to respond to it? Are you going to take that time to now reflect inward and to continue to just exalt God and have an experience, whatever God has for you. So, you know, what's going to be your response? I mean, I've, I've, to keep it a whole buck, I've, I've faced that, you know, experience where I felt those carnal or fleshly thoughts rise up like, hey, this is whack, man. You know, or I'm sharing the heart of God here. God gave me this or no matter what it is, whether it's a, 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 a status post or whether it's a whole, you know, new video or track that I just posted or put out on social media and I want everybody to listen and share it and like it and whatever, you know, what you're challenged in in that moment of how are you going to respond? What's going to be your next action, your next thought, emotion, whatever, if nobody responds to it? I could just be talking about me. I, I know I've had that, those very real moments. That's just keeping it real with y'all. <laughs> yeah, bro, absolutely. It's something that's tough, right? Because, you know, you want a message to be spread at the end of the day. So it's a, it's a, a conflict, right? Because at the end of the day, you know, we have to remind ourselves that are we doing it for admiration? Are we doing it for, you know, people to like us or are we doing it really for God? Are we working, you know, cause God is the one who sees it, you know? And so yeah. I believe everything that we do for God is never in vain. You know, whether it be, you know, maybe nobody listens to it the first week, but you keep releasing music and other things. And Man. somebody, you know, a record executive stumbles upon the song that only had a hundred something plays or whatever. Hey, what's up, guys? It's your boy, The Real Free. Sorry we got cut off. Uh, technical difficulties limited. Me and my brother Angel's conversation, we got cut short. But please be sure to go follow my brother Angel at all the tags linked here to this video. Dope Christian rapper, dope Christian battle rapper. Again, my brother Angel. Also follow his podcast, The Message. You can find his podcast also on iTunes and Spotify. Please make sure you follow Free Lunch on all your social media, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, at Free Lunch. And be sure to follow us and subscribe to the YouTube channel, youtube.com slash The Real Free. That's F-R-I-I, -I, same as Free Lunch, F-R-I-I. Lunch. Please make sure you guys are taking care of yourself as well. Be safe, social distancing, and while you're doing it, make sure you're getting into your word, growing closer to God, going, growing closer to your families that are in your home, where you live, where you stay, spending time with just one another, spending time with yourself. Again, don't forget that empty room sermon. That was deep. Empty room sermon. I like that. Again, till next time, guys, is free lunch with the real free. It's free food for your soul.